And then I can go and add a CSS file of this and all those other things. In the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going to do that. All right. Um, notice I can't view this. If I go and I try to run this, it don't know what to do. All right. Pulls up those pages and I can't view any of them. All right. Because there's no pages yet. There's only a master page. Remember, master pages don't get served. They're an ingredient. All right? They're part of a finished page. So now I can go in and I can make pages that clone from this. So I'll go in and I'll create a new file web page. Call the first one default.aspx. Click select master page. Click Add, select the master page, and now again, because my master page had the two content placeholders, um, my page that is cloned from that master page um, has two content areas, one that corresponds to each of the placeholders. So I'm just going to go in for last and put in home uh, an H2 that says home page. Alright, and now we can run this and now it can display that default.aspx page and again this it got from the master page, this it got from the um, from the uh, individual page, from the default page. Questions about this? Now, let's say I want some sort of section heading here that's going to vary from section to section. Kind of like we did with the navigation, right? If you're, uh, or kind of like they did on LC site with the navigation, where depending on the section, you get a sub navigation, and that sub navigation is. Uh, consistent throughout that section. So let's say I want to have a some sort of, of heading here, uh, a, a secondary heading that, that describes what section of, of the college that we're dealing with. All right. Pardon me? What about an address of the college? Well, the address of the college probably would belong on the main master page, right? Because what I want to do is I want to create a second master page. Okay. All right. I want to create a second master page for business division pages. Oh, okay then a second master page for engineering division pages, and so on. So, what I can do is I can go up here, File, New, File, and instead of saying a web form, I can create another master page. And I will call it the Business Master. And I can inherit from a master page to create another master page. So it will take everything, it, it itself will have a mix of content placeholders and content tags. The content tags that you'll fill in, um, um, the stuff that you want specific to this uh, secondary master page, and then you'll create content placeholders for every page that's going to inherit from it. All right. So, I'll go in here and click Add. I want that master page. So, notice what I get. I get two content tags. These correspond to the content placeholders on the main page. All right. So I'll go in here and say, put in an H2 that says, welcome to the business section of LCCC's site. All right. So I defined
some code that's going to be common to every page that inherits from this secondary master page. I put it in a content tag because it needs to know where it goes on its parent's page. Right? So I have my main master, my business master. The business master has content tags to say where this content this common content for the business section where it's going to go relative to the common content in the main master page. I then need to supply a content placeholder so pages that inherit from this have some place to put their specific content. Okay. So now I'm going to create a page that inherits from the business master, which in turn inherits from the main master as well. So I go up to file, new, file, web form, and we'll call this the CISS page, which is part of the business division. I specify which master page I want. Now I have two to choose from. I could either inherit off of the main master page or the one specific to the business section. I'm going to pick the one specific to the business section. I click OK. And now notice that I get one content tag that has a content placeholder ID of business placeholder. Why do I only get the one content tag? In the previous examples, I got two content. content. That's all you put in there. Because that's all I put into the business master page, right? This guy inherits from the business master page, which means it needs to fill in all the placeholders that are on the business master page. What are the placeholders in the business master page? Well, only this one. Oops. Only this one. The other stuff that's on that page are filling in this guy's, the business master page's master page. That is the main master page. So now on here I can put in some co a code that is... specific to um, the CIS department. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Now if I run this, the CISS page gets code from three different places. This code it got from the main master page. This code it got from the business master page. This code it gets from itself. It gets from the, the CISS page. So I can now go and I can clone a bunch of pages for the business section of the site, like an accounting page and whatever. Um, so I go in and do the same thing. I just want to do one real quick. New file web form. We'll do one for accounting. It will also use the business master page. Again, I get the one content area. And I can put specific code in here. going to share some code with the master page, some code with the business master page, and then it has some code of its own. 
So, if I go and change any of the master pages, if I follow the suggestion of, let's say, gee, it would be nice to put the address on here, all right? That probably I want to put, put in, on every page, right? So I'll go up here on the main master and put in here maybe a paragraph that says 1005 Abbey Road North, Elyria, Ohio. So now I run this. And now every page gets that because it's in the main master page. All right. The home page gets it. The CISS page gets it. And the accounting page gets it. Now, if I want to go and add something just for the business pages, then, like for example, um, Our offices are in BU 211. That's not going to appear on the main page, right, on the default page, because the default page inherited from the master master page, not from the business master page. But the CIS page and the accounting page both will get the stuff that's common in the main master page and the stuff that's common in the business master page, along with the stuff that's specific to that page. All right? So this is very powerful. This is another tool in your, your toolbox here, uh, master pages. This is where, when we talk about design, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in my class talking about design and and in the HTML class, I talk about goals and defining the goals and all that. All that's still important here when you're doing an ASP.NET site. But you have a sort of a different level of design, too, all right, of what components you're going to create. Do you need some custom classes? Do you need some master pages? How are you going to set that up? That's an aspect of design as well, all right? Um, the one phase is the design from the perspective of the user, the design of the user experience, what the user is going to get. All right. Um, the other is technically how you're going to implement that. You know, you may design to have a bunch of pages that look the same and a handful that look different. Well, you could do that a bunch of different ways. If you're clever, you'll spend some time thinking about it and develop some sort of scheme using master pages or whatever to come up with that in CSS files and so on to come up with that. So again, all these things you know, are tools that we're showing you uh, how to do. Part of your job is figuring out when those tools are needed, right? And, and how I'm going to use those tools uh, to craft a, a solution. So instead of rushing in and making 10 pages that look the same, if there's some commonality in those pages, if there's some common behavior, we haven't talked about really the code behind, but there's some common look or behavior in those, then go and put that in a master page, all right, so that um, every page can get that. And again, you can even go beyond that and think of nesting them um, uh, if you have, again, content that's shared within sections of the site as opposed to, to the entire site. Any questions about this? Your next assignment relates to making a little uh, website using these techniques. Now, the one thing that we did not talk about is navigation, all right? There's some components in the ASP.NET uh, framework that allow you to do some nifty things navigation-wise, right? Every website got navigation, right? So why not build a component for it? Well, they did. And that's what we'll look at next time. Now, the good news is is that given your navigation for your assignment, because you're not developing that huge of a site, so the navigation for your assignment is going to be consistent on every page, you can go ahead and get started on the page, the master page and the pages that clone from it, all right, without knowing how to do the navigation, because ultimately we'll only need to put the navigation in one, one spot, all right. So... 
for example, in this case, I would only need to put the navigation in, in uh, one of the two master files. All right, we can talk about which one we'll put it in uh, next time. Questions? You're talking about the breadcrumbs? Well, I'm talking about breadcrumbs, and I'm talking about just like a, a set of menus as well, or, or a menu, not a set of menus. Yes? The, the only thing I want to say, I'm trying to understand, if you change the master page, it's reflected in all the other pages that right. have inherited from it, unless you add a new content. You add it in the master page. In the master page, but that won't show up in the other pages that inherited from that master page. It's available to the other pages that inherited to it, but like no code will show up by default, if, if that's what you mean. All right. If I put, okay. for example, let, let's go and do this. Let's go and put in the master page, let's put another content placeholder. All right, and let's do something real sloppy in the interest of time, and let's use an uh, embedded style to say style background blue um, height hundred pixels. Alright. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me a, a, a blue a blue a, 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 a hundred pixel tall blue div on the bottom of every, every page. All right. So I went and added a content placeholder to this. All right. Let me run this. Every page knows about it, right? So it's now on that default page. It's on the CISS page. It's on the accounting page. All right. So to answer your question, yeah, that content placeholder gets added everywhere. All right. Now, where we don't see it is we don't see it over here. We don't see a corresponding content area for it until we manually put it in. All right. So in the default ASPX file, we see the two content placeholder IDs. We see the two content tags that correspond to the two uh, content placeholders that were there when we created this page. All right. Now, we can certainly go in and, and put in another content area that uses that, but we don't see an empty content tag there. It doesn't like retro go and add an empty content tag there for it, if that makes sense. All right. So, yeah, it is there, and if it has a size or if there was an image or whatever, we'd see it, but there's no code for us to customize it because it wasn't there when we created it. We can certainly go in and add it if we need to put some custom content on that. All right. Okay. It doesn't blow up. Notice that we don't have that content tag. It just doesn't fill it with anything. Now again, if we were to create another page that inherited from that master uh, page, we would see that content area, right? Because at the time I created that, there were three content placeholders. Other questions? Yes. 